So I thought I'd make this little tutorial on using Darktable. I use it to edit a lot of images for my clients, and it's a lot of fun. This is Max of Haven Website Pro, and uh, what we're going to do is learn how to edit images in Darktable. So let's go ahead. What we could do up here, right here where it says Add to Library, you can open this up and navigate to your folders. And if you're not finding the place that you need to go to, click this little plus sign right here and it's going to bring up your folder and what you would do is you would just navigate to where you needed to go this particular one I'm synchronizing it with my Google Drive uh, I do this a lot I'll use this in an I'll do another tutorial on how to synchronize in Google Drive but it gives me the option like if I need to travel or anything and I need to work on something on my laptop I could always access my Google Drive but I'm navigating to this folder called outside and whenever you get here you'll select outside uh, or whatever folder that you have you can see here's my previous uh projects that i've been working on and uh, these are already added to my library but you could just hit Control a and click add to library and it'll add those images to your library you see it imported four images now you can hold your control button scroll in on your mouse and you can see these images now I'm ready to work on them, so I'm going to click the first one and hit Control A. These are all similar color profiles, so what I'm going to apply to one, I'll apply to the other. So I'm going to go into dark room here. Uh, see, right now I'm in light table. Now we're going to dark room, and right over here I have all my effects that I that I can use to enhance this uh, image graphic. And I'm going to show you something else. Uh, You'll notice now in my Google Drive folder, I'm getting these XMP files. Well, these are files created by Darktable, and this is what stores your effects on each one of those images, okay? And so that's how that, that structure works. So the XMP is a file that just is going to save your effects that you're applying to those images. So let's go through here and see what I want to do. I want to enhance these. I want to make them pop a little bit more. So I have right here this power button. These are the ones that are already applied. Okay. So now let's go to this particular one. And let me go ahead. We'll come down here to base curve and I'll turn it on. Okay. Now when I turn that on, if I go to my power, you can see I have base curve here. And so now I can start playing around with this base curve. I can make this thing a little bit brighter, a little bit deeper, you know, just messing around with that. It's all really, you know, what, what, what's pleasing to your eye. Let me come down here, the contrast and brightness. I want to turn that on. I could also come right in here with this contrast and brightness and play with these settings here. Or I could go to what, what's powered on, and you can see I still have contrast and brightness here. So I always like to bring up the saturation. It makes the, the picture pop a little bit more. You know, it makes the greens greener, the, the pinks pinker, and so on and so forth. And then sometimes I'll play around with this brightness. Uh, bring it up and down. Just whatever I feel looks good. And my contrast, if I go way up, that's what it does. If I go way back, that's what it does. So you got to just a little finesse that around a little bit. Let me close that up. We'll go see what else we have here. Uh, I have a, uh, a exposure tone equalizer. Uh, if you want to see what something does, I recommend just turning it on. And then you can just turn it off just like that. Uh, you know, some of these things have presets. Um, let me go to this next one. So this next one mainly has to do with, uh, uh, you know, shading and stuff like that. This one has to do with colors. This one has to do with, you know, corrections. Uh, and this one has to do with, like, effects, like watermarks and framing and stuff like that. I like the Vignette just about all of my photos, but I do that at the end. So I kind of work with this way. I start with this, you know, the shadows and highlights and stuff like that. Then I come over here to like the different contrast settings. 
And let me play around with this. And uh, you know what? I'll just keep recording here. Let you know, see, you know, show you what I'm doing. I like this uh, filmic RGB. It's it's applies. I don't know. It just gives you that. It, it makes the photo pop a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more mystery to it, and I kind of like that. And right here, you can do these. There's different settings within this plugin uh, that you can play with. It's all playing around, really. Um, this RGB curve, uh, sometimes this is a good thing to do. Sometimes it's not. Just, just got to play around with these. Just see what looks good. Let me come right here. Oh, Velvia. I always like this one here. This is one I apply on just about every uh, one that I do. Uh, I can bring the strength up bringing the strength down, but I kind of like what it already did to that picture, so. Oh, let me see here. Let me go on to my denoise. is something that I use a lot. It kind of makes the picture pop. This haze removal is a real nice. It, it uh, Everything has to do with bringing that picture out, you know. Um, let me go ahead. I like it the way it is. Let me go ahead and go with my Viginette. It kind of makes that picture pop a little bit more. Uh, this soft, and a lot of times you'll use it with portraits. But I'll show you what it does, but it's going to make everything blurry. But usually you'll use that with a mask. Um, there are also settings in here, like if you needed more plugins. Uh, I'm looking at all the modules or plugins. Uh, then they have, you know, workflow for a beginner. Uh, workflow display referred or scene referred uh, this beginner workflow is pretty good but I just like to see all my modules the ones that are uh, there and that I can use so let me go back to power here and you can see these are all the things that I have applied to this picture and uh, another very similar picture that I have well all of them are pretty similar but if I go to this one here uh, you could see that it has doesn't have those effects applied yet. But I could come back to this first one. And what I could do is hit Control C on the keyboard. And I just copied all those effects. And then I could go to this next picture here and hit Control V on the keyboard. And it will apply all those effects. And if I don't feel like, I might feel like this picture is just a little bit too dark. I will go to my contrast and brightness and maybe turn the brightness up a little bit for this particular image. Uh, my Velvia, I would say, have that there. Like, okay, where's my Viginette? Okay, let me see here. Sometimes I like to scale these down. I could actually go in side the image here and hover over these round things i don't know if you guys can see them on the video but you see how it takes the uh the image you know trying to get you to focus on uh certain things uh, let me go ahead, turn that off back on i kind of like it on let me go with what i have powered here this haze removal i think i'm going to turn the strength up just a little bit and again, what you're seeing on the video, you you know, I'm I'm probably seeing something a little bit more clear, more crisp. Uh, you could actually see these these other ones. So now I'm going to copy this Control C on my keyboard, and here we kind of have you know a picture that's a little bit bland. I'm going to hit Control V as in Victor, paste my effects in there, and uh, see what it looks like and Although it made the picture pop a little bit more, uh, I want to get something more out of it. So let me turn off this. No. So a lot of this is just playing around and, and trying to make that picture pop a little bit more. And sometimes when you're looking for stuff, like I want to denoise this picture a little bit more, see if I have another denoise setting like that here's the denoise profile let me turn it on see what it does the raw denoise is for raw photos like if you have a dslr so i have these two denoises 
Uh, let me see here. The surface blur, I'll show you what it does. I definitely won't be put applying that. But it just puts like a little blur on the surface. Let me see here. Okay, so let me go back to the colors. Uh, let me turn on this color contrast. Uh, what I like to do is go to extremes and then bring it back, you know. I kind of like that, though, the color contrast. Let me bring up the uh, blue, yellow. Yeah, I think it's making it pop just a little bit more. So this LUT 3D, probably not something I'm going to apply. Calibrate this color a little bit. Um, I'm probably getting a little bit too green there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, just, you, keep, you keep coming in here and playing with these different things. Try to get something that, you know, that's, that you're liking. And you know what? I kind of like these uh, photos. I, I like what that looks like. Let me look at this other one here. Yeah, maybe. So I'm going to hit control C, come over here and apply it to this one. Let me see what that does. Might have made it just a little bit too greeny. So I'm going to come over here to the, the, the power. I'm going to turn off things. Yeah, and turn on things. I see I'm getting my, my too much green from that color contrast. It's kind of lost the uh, definition of the flower there, as you can see. So I um, might turn it on, but I might come in here and let's see here. Let me take down these. I don't want to lose uh, details. Just enough. A lot of times, you know, you just got to. Uh, Sarah, I'm starting to lose a detail. Yeah, I think I'm just going to turn that one off. But I'm going to go around here. I'm going to play with this stuff some more because I, it usually takes me a while. But like when you're when you're all done and you're satisfied with these, uh, you know, the colors and the balancing and stuff like that. Here, let me just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to apply it to here. Make it make this pop a little bit more. See how that made that pop a little bit more. And uh, so now I'm going to go back to light table here. Oh, and sometimes you'll get a crash like that. Let me just restart it. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to highlight all these pictures. And over here, I'm getting ready to export them. So I, I'm going to come down to this export. And right here, you want to use JPEG 8-bit, especially if you're, uh, you know, putting it online or something. Here you could select a folder, what folder you want it to output to. And so I'm just obviously going to go to my Google Drive, to my clients. I'm going to take this off just because for privacy reasons. And let me come down to my client where I'm going to be exporting them. All right pictures outside okay now i found the 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 where i'm going to be you know exporting them it's going to be the outside one and sometimes what i'll do is i'll create a new folder you know and i'll call it web because you know these are going to be scaled down a little bit for the web and i'll select 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 as output destination and make sure all the pictures are highlighted and then uh, I'm setting my size to 800 pixels. That's good enough for what I'm going to be using this for. If you need bigger ones, you can adjust that. And then I'm just going to hit export. And you'll notice it gets exporting images. And it shows you where it's exporting to. And let me go ahead and bring up that folder. 
right here so you guys can see what's going on if i double click web you can see now here are my finished images and now i'm ready to use them on the web all right this is max with a website pro i hope you like this tutorial on dark table and i will see you in the next video